Yeah, well, on the second point, that, there, that really isn't correct. We, uh, we have positions which you don't even see because we only listed the ones above $600 million in the last report, and obviously those are all smaller positions. Sometimes be that's because they're smaller companies and we couldn't get that much money in. Sometimes it's because the price has moved up after we've bought them. And sometimes it's because we're, we may be selling the position down even. But uh, so we have no, there's nothing magic. We like to put a lot of money in things that, uh, that we feel strongly about. And that gets back to the diversification question. Uh, you know, we, we think diversification is, as practice generally, makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. Uh, they, diversification is a protection against ignorance. I mean, if you want to make sure that nothing bad happens to you relative to the market, you own everything. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that, that is a perfectly sound approach for somebody who, who does not feel they know how to analyze businesses. If you know how to analyze businesses and value businesses, it's crazy to own 50 stocks or 40 stocks or 30 stocks probably, uh, because there aren't that many wonderful businesses at, that are understandable to a single human being in all likelihood. And it, and to have some super wonderful business and then put money in number 30 or 35 on your list of attractiveness and, and forego putting more money into number one just strikes Charlie and me as, as, as madness. And it, it, it's conventional practice and it, it, it may, uh, you know, if all you have to achieve is, is average, uh, it it's, uh, it it's, uh, may preserve your job, but it, it's a confession in our view that you don't really understand the businesses that you own. Um, you know, I base, I mean, as on a personal portfolio basis, you know, I own one stock, you know, it, but it's a business I know, it, and, and it leaves me very comfortable. Uh, so, you know, do I, do I need to own 28 stocks in order to, you know, have proper diversification, you know, and, uh, be nonsense. And within Berkshire, I could pick out three of our businesses, and I would, I would be very happy if they were the only businesses we owned and I had all my money in Berkshire. Now, I love it, the fact that we can find more than that and that we keep adding to it. But three wonderful businesses is, is, more, than, uh, is more than you need in this life to do very well. And uh, uh, the, average, the average person isn't going to run into that. I mean, if you look at how the fortunes were built in this country, uh, they weren't built out of a portfolio of 50 companies. They were, they were built by someone who, who uh, identified with, this, with a wonderful business. Coca-Cola is a great example. A lot of fortunes have been built on that. And there aren't 50 Coca-Colas. You know, there aren't 20. If there were, it would be fine. We could all go out and diversify like crazy among that group and, and get results that would be equal to owning the really wonderful one. But you're not going to find it. And, uh, and the truth is, you don't need it. I mean, if you, if you have a really wonderful business, is very well protected against against the vicissitudes of the economy over time and 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 the competition. I mean, you know, we're talking about businesses that are resistant to effective competition, and three of those will be better than a hundred average businesses, at, uh, uh, and and they'll be safer, incidentally. I mean, they there is less risk in owning three easy to identify wonderful businesses there than there is in owning 50 uh, well-known big businesses. And uh, uh, it's amazing what has been taught over the years in finance classes about that. But uh, uh, I can assure you that, that uh, I would rather pick, if, if I had to bet the next 30 years on the fortunes of uh, of my family that would be dependent upon the income from a given group of businesses. I would rather pick three businesses from those we own than own a diversified group of 50. Charlie? Yeah, what he's saying is that much of what is taught in modern corporate finance courses is twaddle. Do you want to elaborate on that, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> you cannot believe this stuff. I huh? mean, it, it's uh, modern portfolio theory, and uh, yeah, it's it's it has no utility. But I mean, it, it, it you know it will tell you how to do average, but you know I I. I 
I think uh, anybody can figure out how to do average in fifth grade. I mean, it, it's just not that difficult. And uh, it's, it's elaborate, and, you know, there's lots of little Greek letters and all kinds of things to make you feel that you're in the big leagues, but it, uh, <laughs> there is no value added. <laughs> I have great difficulty with it because I am something of a student of dementia, and I have... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we hang around a lot together. And I can ordinarily <laughs> classify dementia, you know, on some uh, theory structure of models, but the modern portfolio theory, uh, it involves a type of dementia I just can't even classify. No. Something very strange is going on. <laughs> yeah. if, you find, if you find three wonderful businesses in your life, you'll get very rich. And, and if you understand them, Bad things aren't going to happen to that, those three. I mean, that, that's the characteristic of it. it uh... By the way, maybe that's the reason there's so much dementia. If you believe what Warren said, you could teach the whole course in about a week. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, and the high priest wouldn't have any edge over the lay people, and that, that right. never sells well. <laughs> right.